So two and two should be three and one. We won't go there. Uh, third straight loss to the Buccaneers. That was a 26-9 decision last weekend, and really uh, just <laughs> a rough game to watch. You kick three field goals. You had some unfortunate situations, like you picked off Baker Mayfield at the one, even though the guy fell into the end zone, and then you turn it over and they immediately score. So really weird game. A lot of people are panicking with this offense because you spent a lot of resources on Derek Carr to come in and make this offense better, and, you know, they haven't really lived up to the lofty expectations that come with those dollar signs so far. But I'm saying you shouldn't panic. And here's why. Of course, Alvin Kamara missed the first chunk of the season there. And this past weekend was his first game back. And I thought he played very well individually. And this offense will just get better as the weeks go by, as he gets to practice more, and as they play more with, with getting that chemistry, with the play calling, with what works, with what doesn't work. And this Buccaneers game specifically, I think they had way too many third downs. And that's something they'll have to avoid moving forward. 14 third down situations for New Orleans in this game and they only converted on five of them and these were mostly third and medium third and long situations which just don't favor this New Orleans team really especially with a quarterback who's nursing a shoulder injury you missed uh, Juwan Johnson as well that's something else Juwan Johnson didn't play in this game he's a tight end you may not be too familiar with him but I think he's the X factor for this Saints offense at tight end because on those third and medium situations, you want to have that tight end that can fake the block for the run, go out and catch a pass. They didn't have that. And who's the tight end behind Juwan Johnson? Jimmy Graham? Foster Morrow? Uh, neither. Uh, Morrow didn't even play in this game. And Jimmy Graham, he can't do the things that Juwan Johnson does. This guy's a former wide receiver, extremely athletic. So hopefully they get him back. He just allows this offense to do more things than it can without him. And I think that was pertinent and obvious in this game. Also, the run game's got to get going more. Like, I understand why it wasn't the first couple weeks of the season, because you didn't have Kamara. But you only uh, had 70 yards on the ground on 19 carries. That's below four yards per carry. I think Kamara needs more handoffs. He had 11 touches for 51 yards in that regard. So definitely your most efficient runner in this game. Why not give him the ball more? He had 13 receptions too, but I think Kamara needs more handoffs, especially on third and five. Give him a try, you know? So we'll see if that changes moving forward. Again, you know, him coming back, being on the sideline in uniform, able to play, you'll get better as the weeks go by on what plays to call and what situations, and Kamara allows you to run and call a lot of different plays. Plus, you got to take better care of the football. You had three turnovers in this game, two fumbles and a pick. And they all came at a time where the game was kind of already out of hand. The late fumble there that led to that uh, touchdown in the first half after that interception, that one was a backbreaker for sure. But the fumble at the end of the game that led to the Bucks field goal to make it 26-9, to I mean, whatever. I mean, don't want to do it, but obviously can't have it. But uh, it didn't impact the game that much. And then Jameis Winston throws a pick. And that fumble that led to that touchdown at the end of the first half, again, the guy intercepted the ball, New Orleans corner, and it got called down at the one-yard line. I mean, that's just a tough spot to be in. That really changed the game. So I, I think that was just an unfortunate situation. Like, how rare is that that you pick the ball off and instead of it being a touchback, you're down to the one, right? Uh, the offensive line continues to struggle. It's kind of just a laundry list of why the offense is bad. They allowed three more sacks. So they've got to continue to play better. I talked about Kamara needing more rushing touches. And Chris Olave was shut down against Tampa Bay. And it was obvious. He had one catch for four yards. He's yet to score a touchdown this season. You need more from Chris Olave. He had an opportunity for a touchdown, but he dropped it. So that's also holding this offense back. But, look, you still got the pieces. Olave, we've seen it before. Last year, he turned it on, right? He really broke out in the second half of the season. So he has it within him to do it. Now they've just got to find a way to replicate that from last year. And then the final point I have, perhaps, is the biggest point. You got to finish drives. If this offense was scoring touchdowns right now and not kicking field goals, we wouldn't even be having this discussion. New Orleans is 
26th in the NFL right now out of 32 teams in points per game at 15 and a half, I think it is, which is not good. So in this game against Tampa Bay, they had three different drives that were long but ended in field goals. 11 plays, 56 yards, you kicked a field goal. 12 plays, 57 yards, again, you kicked a field goal. 14 plays for 49 yards, another field goal. Those have to be touchdowns. You've got to finish drives. When you go for 10-plus plays and you've got the defense on its heels, you've got to find a way to put that ball in the end zone. I think that's one of the biggest differences if they can begin to do that that we'll see with this offense. So, look, don't panic. Carr wasn't 100% in this game. Kamara's first game back. Tampa Bay is a really solid team, too. Let's not forget about that. we got to give them some credit. You've got all your pieces. We need Juwan Johnson back at tight end. I think this offense can certainly produce and do the things that it hoped it could do when it doled out a ton of money to bring in Derek Carr. So let's see what happens against New England. they got a solid defense, but they have some guys dealing with injuries, so there might be some opportunities for this offense to produce. And if they get going, this team can accomplish what we thought they would, which is winning the division and perhaps competing for a conference championship as well. So let's see what they do in New England. I don't think it's time to panic, though, with this Saints offense.